Hey guys, Chris from Purple Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to show you how to do a Big 3 upgrade. Let's get started. Oftentimes, a Big 3 upgrade is needed if you have a big amplifier or sound system in your vehicle and you experience dimming of the lights whether they're interior or the headlights whenever that bass hits. Generally speaking what you're experiencing is your amplifier is drawing more current than your battery or alternator wiring can keep up with. Now at a bare minimum a big three upgrade will certainly help with that amperage or that current delivery from the alternator through the battery to your aftermarket amplifier. This is not a solution to everything. You also, of course, need to have a healthy alternator and battery, which also could be culprits to the dimming of the lights. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to at least upgrade your wiring as a safe measure as you're installing an amplifier in your car to help with those dimming lights. Now in today's install, we're gonna be working on this Honda Civic. This Civic has a SCAR Audio 1200 watt amplifier install. And with that being said, even if running at 100% efficiency, that amp's gonna be pulling between 80 and 90 amps. Uh, we wanna make sure that there's plenty of current delivery from the alternator and battery to support that draw from that amplifier. So, hence a big three up. Now, in terms of what type of kit that you need for a big three upgrade, there's various kits that are ready to go on the market that you can pick up. Some kits will actually have an inline fuse included, some kits don't. Some factory electrical systems up underneath the hood don't have the alternator line to the battery fuse. Some cars do, it just really depends and it's your call. You can argue down in the comments whether you want to fuse that run or not. Worst case scenario, lean on the side of fusing it just in case you have any sort of wiring failure. You don't have a live run running to the alternator all the time. So we have a kit here. This is some four gauge OFC wiring. We have some copper lugs. Again, most wiring big three upgrade kits will come with everything that you need. All the lugs, um, heat shrink, zip ties, split loom, everything in there, and we can link our favorite ones in the description. With this wire here, we have about six feet of wiring here um, of our positive wire. Really, the color doesn't matter. Um, we have some four gauge copper lugs here as well, and we have some heat shrink as well. We have some just different color for our grounds. Color doesn't really matter. You can again argue that color does, that the electricity running through the wire is not gonna care what color the wire is. So with all that aside, what we need to do is start adding some lugs to the ends of these. Uh, we're gonna use a crimper. Uh, you can solder your lugs on, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so with our first run ready to go, uh, we got our lugs on. We found our alternator here. Some vehicles, the alternator is gonna be buried and it may be easier to get under jack stands or a lift or something that may be up underneath the vehicle. Our Honda Civic is nice and simple. It's here on the top and our main positive post is there at the top as well. Now we're not gonna replace or remove the factory wiring. We are only adding to it. And what we're gonna do is loosen that nut here at the top and we're gonna slip our wire up underneath. All right, so we got our uh, power wire added. We just added right on top of the factory one. And uh, we actually fed it through the factory boot so we can still put the boot up and over, kinda cool. Sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes the boots are plastic and not rubber. So it just depends on your vehicle. But our power wire is done. And uh, now let's run this over to the battery.
Okay, so with that power wire upgrade done from the alternator, we ran along the radio support mount because that's where the factory wiring is. Now you could go elsewhere, but zip tie it to something factory uh, just so it doesn't get in the way of any mechanical moving parts in the engine bay. Went along the factory loom, that's along the radio support, and we went up to the positive post of our battery here. Now we can do our two additional upgrades, which is our battery ground and our engine ground. All right, so next here we went ahead and prepped our engine ground and found a factory grounding location to the factory grounding point in the engine bay. Again, we're going to go ahead and split loom it here. Again, the, really the color doesn't matter, but we just happen to have a different color for our ground, so we're going to use it in our install. Again, a shorter run here for the engine ground. Let's go ahead and get this guy installed. Now here is our engine ground. It goes from this point right there, loops up to the uh, shock tower here in the engine bay. And uh, generally speaking, you want to probably find a location that has a factory grounding point on your engine. If you don't, generally something on the head or the block, just don't choose a bolt that would compromise the integrity of the engine. We want something that's generally meant for an electrical ground. It just needs to be on the head or the block somewhere. Uh, but again, choose your bolt wisely. And my recommendation, always find something that is already being used as a ground. So we're gonna do the same thing with this ground location. Okay, so we got our engine ground done from that factory ground all the way back up in there to the factory grounding point there. Now, if it's ever questionable if the location off the engine to where it grounds to the body, if, it, if there's a lot of paint there, paint is a resistance. Paint's gonna give you an issue. So if you see a location but it's covered in paint or covered in a coating, get yourself a wire brush and clean that up. Paint there will increase the resistance, decrease the efficiency, and in the end, with that extra resistance, um, it's really not gonna be as effective as you hope. So make sure the surface is nice and clean. Okay, so we're now finally on our battery ground here. Now our battery engine negative post doesn't have an additional stud, unfortunately, so we'll have to go to the tightening stud. Now, in terms of where to ground it, generally try to find the battery ground. You can also use something here on the uh, front end support, but again, see how it's covered in paint? We'd have to really strip that paint in order to get a decent connection. If we look a little harder here, if we look down there, right down there is our factory battery mounting location to the uh, more of the structural unibody of the, the vehicle. So we're gonna go down there. So again, we went ahead and prepped our wire here. We'll split loom it. We're gonna have to get a couple extensions to get all the way down there. Um, but we're gonna go to that ground location and run it up to this stud. Now that's about it for our big three upgrade. If you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. Like I said before, I'm gonna go ahead and link a ton of different big three upgrade kits in the description in case you wanna do one of these at home. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time and we will see you in the next video.